Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosala here bringing you this video from the bottom of a rabbit hole, a deep rabbit hole, and a scary rabbit hole. What I want to talk about today is a situation in the world of data storage that I think is pretty crazy. Now other people would say uh, this is an imaginary problem, but I think it's a real problem and I think it's worth talking about for those who are interested in data and storage. Now I know this YouTube channel covers a whole bunch of different topics, and uh, but some of the people who have seen my previous videos on everything backup related might be tuned into what I'm gonna talk about today. Um, when it comes to backup, which is a long-standing interest of mine within technology, both something I've been doing, you can't really call backup recreational, but something I've been taking seriously on a personal level for years, um, even my uh, work has brought me into doing some uh, marketing work for companies in the backup world. And backup and storage kind of go hand in hand because when you back something up, you have to store it somewhere. So I've been looking for years, years, probably not, probably years actually, into storage, long-term archival storage. And a scary truth has gradually unfolded for me. The truth is as follows. When it comes to storing your data cold on a shelf, not connected to electricity, not in a server, not in an NAS, blah, 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 um, there really is nothing that is long-term stable currently in existence. And I think this is a really crazy situation. I'm holding in my hand what my research so far, so far, and I'm not claiming to be the world expert on this. I know about as much as some people in this sphere, there's some people who know a lot more than me, a ton more than me. I'm talking about not professionals in the enterprise storage space. I'm talking about just hobbyists. The data hoarder subreddit is where us crazies discuss. But my research to date and that of seemingly other people has led me to believe that this kind of weird storage media that I'm holding here, which is called MDisk, these are Blu-ray MDisk. The MDisk, I talk, I've covered in another video, it's a type of archival storage that uh, is supposed to hold your data for 100 or 1,000 years, depending on the class. The difference between an M-Disc, I'm gonna just show you guys an actual M-Disc. Take one of my spindles. I'm waiting on my M-Disc reader or burner, but I have my actual M-Discs, M-Disc. And this is what it looks like on the back. You can see the webcam I'm using to record this video with. Um, it's basically a type of Blu-ray or DVD, depending on which one you get that instead of having this standard layer, has a layer of uh, what they call uh, inorganic rock-like material. Its exact composition is a trade secret, but it's intended for archival use specifically. So it's supposed to be really, really durable. So unlike a regular DVD or Blu-ray, this stuff is supposed to really last with your data. But these things are pretty obscure. The company that developed the technology, Millenniata, went out of business, it went bankrupt, and now verbatim has the magic formula, and they're making these. But it's just crazy to me to think that this random form of Blu-ray that like only one company makes is the best that there is, and even that's not perfect. Now, this to me is just a crazy, crazy thing. Like, when we're talking about storage, this might sound all very abstruse, and what's this guy, Daniel, doing talking about storage, and he's talking about these crazy tech topics, it's actually not abstruse at all, or ab abstruse, or obtruse, whatever word you want to use. Data storage, I mean, every anything digital, your your wedding photos, uh, your business's computer files, etc. This is actually the day, as our lives are all lived online, this is the, the stuff of everyday life, it's essential. Now, some of the reading and watching I've been doing recently is, I'll just, just swap over to the screen. This is a really good video. It's from the Council of State Archivists. So again, don't listen to, don't rely on my knowledge of storage media, but do rely on that of the Council of State Archivists because if, if, uh, if, if someone knows about resilience of, of data, it's probably a archival organization, right? So this video is really good. It's called FAQs on BitRot. Um, it's not the stuff of, uh, it's not a replacement for Netflix or, uh, or, or Hollywood block blockbusters, but it does do a really good job. And basically what they come to, come to say is that, you know, nothing is immune to BitRot. This slow process 
of the degradation of media. Now, again, I say this is crazy because what they come to in the video, at the conclusion of this video, and that's what people who discuss this on Reddit, the data hoarder subreddit will say as well, well, what's our solution to bit rot? What's, what's our solution to this crazy situation currently? Uh, it is storing multiple copies of data. It's, uh, it's uh, redundancy. It's having you know, one copy here, and maybe you have a checksum off-site, or you just have two off-sites and one on-site, and that way you can manage the fact that um, BitRot might affect one data pool because you've always got other data pools. And when we're talking about off-site backup, we're talking about stuff, um, and even if we're doing live on-site backup, not cold backup, we're talking about uh, you know uh, storage sitting in an NAS, it's got RAID going on, there's some kind of checking and data scrubbing technology at work there. Um, but it's still pretty wild to me at least to think that when it comes to there is no such thing currently as minus these. And I mean, MDIS kind of, kind of are a solution. The reason I say kind of is because, well, firstly their capacity is capped at uh, 100. I haven't seen disks bigger than 100 gigs. Um, it's a slow process I gather to write to these. I haven't done it yet, but I understand it's slow and tedious. And um, it, it, it just seems to me that this is not, this, this is great. I mean, it's better than there not being something like this but it's probably not the ideal long-term archival storage media. And people would say, well, isn't tape LTO gonna do that job? And everything I've read so far indicates that tape is susceptible to, uh, to, to bit rot. Um, now, I don't have a source for this. I've just read it in various places on the internet. But I mean, if you think about the storage media that are out there, these are just a couple of very random graphics I pulled out of uh, Google Images, but they seem reasonably good to me because they at least uh, included tape. So you have hard drives and SSDs. They're 100% definitely susceptible to bit rot because they depolarize over time and the magnetic charges holding the bits and the bytes. And when you think about it, now again, a little bit down the rabbit hole here, but when you think about how many bits and bytes are in something as simple as this little graphic on my screen, it's actually mind boggling how any data managed to be stored for any length of time at all, right? When you think about the millions of ones and zeros and ones and zeros that are in even something as simple as this, never mind a 4K video, it's miraculous, the tech we have today, but it is fallible. So hard drives and SSDs, bit rot for sure. RAM is, is, is a live storage medium, so let's skip that, likewise RAM. CD, DVD, optical media, apparently, as I said, the best thing we have, and not CDs and DVDs, specifically, but uh, M-Discs being the very best in class within that category for archival. Floppy disk, I have no idea about floppy disk. They haven't seen or used one in probably over a decade, but I do, I, I do remember the capacity was like minuscule. Uh, memory cards and pen drives are both notorious for failing, and I've never heard of anyone using them for uh, cold storage. There's stuff you put in your cameras and get the data out of it. And again, LTO is what people, whenever you mention the word archival, or cold storage, people say LTO, LTO, tape. But again, and I'm waiting on a response on Twitter from uh, Mr. Backup, the world's foremost backup expert, whose podcast I attended. I, I was kindly invited onto as a guest a number of years ago. That was a great honor, Curtis Preston. Very, very interesting guy, and he knows crazy amounts. I guess really the world's foremost authority on this whole subject of backup and storage. So uh, it's a great honor to have um, encounter the guy even digitally but this is the current situation we have so the what i want to say is is crazy is as follows the two two crazy things one it's crazy that with all the r d effort humanity's gone to all the crazy advances in storage capacity think about it remember the floppy disk that could hold one uh megabyte something like 1.4 megabytes and now i practically have it on my desk here i have a little i have in my camera a 512 gigabyte micro SD card that's about this big, 512 gigs, half a terabyte, and I've seen terabyte micro SD cards. Literally a fingernail can hold a terabyte. So we've managed to compact storage exponentially, exponentially, exponentially in such a short period of time. And yes, we have yet to develop a storage media that will hold your data indefinitely guaranteed I don't want to say M-Disc 
I don't want to say that it, it, it's kind of what this is supposed to be, but I'm kind of a bit hesitant to say, but we have MDISC because of the fact that, um, from what I understand, there's a lot about MDISC that's not proven. And part of me thinks, well, if MDISC was really such a unbelievably resilient storage media as it claims to be, it would probably be, it would probably be less of an obscure thing. Um, it's crazy, that, and that's crazy fact one. Crazy fact two, don't say it's that you are crazy, Daniel. Crazy fact two is that the solution to this problem, which I think is a legitimate, real R&D problem in tech that no one talks about almost, um, is that the solution is to is the cloud. And as we all know, the cloud is just someone else's computer. So when you actually put those two facts together, you 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 can say the following statement as being true. We don't have humanity, any form of cold storage medium that is, to the best of our knowledge, that has been proven conclusively to be absolutely as good as etching into rock like the ancient Egyptians did back in their civilization. The problem, of course, is that you can't really etch billions of ones and zeros uh, into rock in any way that would fit or that could be read. And the second part of the, the, this, this craziness um, that I submit is craziness, is that the solution, and the, the cloud is beautiful, but the solution to that problem, and I don't think this is a good solution, is to give over all your data, every digital bit and byte, every photo, every video, every digital asset you create during your lifetime, and entrust it solely to the cloud. So yeah, you could use two clouds, you could have if you're uh, trying to back up a, a movie for posterity, you could say, well, I'm gonna put it in three clouds. I'm gonna put it in Amazon S3. I'm gonna, you know, you, you did a movie that was like your life's masterpiece and you never wanted to lose this data. Yeah, you could put one file, one copy in, S, in Amazon AWS, one copy in Backblaze and one copy in another cloud, cloud storage provider, but you can't count upon your copy, the copy physically sitting in your archive or your home um, at least in a simple manner without talking about checksums and periodically rewriting and detecting bit rot blah 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 there's nothing you can just say there is such thing as a special magical archival class hard drive that is written and the data will store there indefinitely permanently absolutely no questions asked within 99.99999% uh, success rate that to the best of my knowledge doesn't exist and I think that's pretty whack. So there you go, guys. That's my little uh, tech rant for today. If you have any thoughts about this, this is, I wouldn't say it's keeping me up at night, but I still can't quite wrap my head around this. So if there's something I'm missing or you have thoughts to add to this um, commentary spiel, uh, please feel free to leave me a comment. Not many people care or are interested in this uh, topic. I do realize that, uh, but if you're one of them and have, uh, have thoughts to get across, uh, drop me a comment. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you wanna get more, more from me, uh, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Have a very good day.